take notes, review your notes before and after every class, and then study for two hours for every hour that you're in class. If that sounds like something you've heard before, then you know that's pretty much impossible. Here are my first official vlog. Vlog. Um, I'm going to tell you what the how to really study. If that sounds like something you've heard before, you know that's pretty much fine, so I'm just repeating that. That's why I'm here. Christian Funkhauser voted most misunderstood and most controversial, different years, mind you, by the Sting Staff. Sting Staff being the newspaper that I write for college. I've decided to revise my study tip yet again to help you, person watching this, succeed. I work 45 hours a week, go to school full time, and I'm in classes 20 hours a week. I live off campus, so I spend about 8 hours a week off um, in traffic. I teach Bible studies, and so there's no way I'm going to allot 40 hours of my week to study on top of my already 20 hours of class time a week. Therefore, I'm creating this vlog to show you guys a realistic way to study and put my six years of college to use. I've changed majors a couple times. Um, I spent about three years in architecture. Because just giving you guys ordinary tips like study, don't miss class, take notes, find a study buddy won't help you. Because realistically, you will skip classes, you will be late, and you have a life. Some days you'll be too tired to take notes or forget a notebook. The absolute most important thing you must do is to get to know the professor. Be at every class on time until the first step. But Christian, you were going to tell me not to do that, you might be thinking. Well, until the first test, you have to spend your time gathering information unless you've had the professor before. During the first month, you have to find out if he, I understand there are female professors, but for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to use the term he for everyone relies on the text or teaches completely from his personal notes. Ensuring that you don't miss class will help you figure out if he is preparing you for the test or just talking to hear himself talk. It will also let you know if the test is out of the books or from that lecture. Note taking wise, ensure that you write everything they put on the board. Come hell or high water, you must attend the first test and if the professor offers it, the pre-test class. The pre-test day is almost as important as the test itself. During the class period before the test, if the professor chooses to have a review day, the professor will tell you specifically what will be on the test fail the test. Furthermore, finding out what topics are going to be on the test will allow you to better use your study time um, on what your professor deems most important. If it's an essay test, you might find out the question or the topic the question is over. The professor wants you to do good and on the test so long as you study. Good grades for you equal positive feedback and therefore pay raises for him. But a professor isn't simply going to give you A's. However, be prepared for the classic professor response. To do good, you must study everything. Of which professors normally base the test on what they teach. For instance, a professor who teaches from their notes will test on the notes, splashing in a couple book questions. Use the first test as an example of what to expect in the future. Most professors are consistent in their test giving styles. If a test is based highly on the book and he taught from the notes, you'll know next time what to focus on. See how obscure the facts are. In, his hist in a history class, did he mention, however briefly, a specific date, but didn't focus on it, but expects you to know it? In a political science class, did they not go over acronyms but use them? If there are multiple textbooks, does he focus on a specific one more than others? And if so, why? When I first started school, I wasn't a good test taker. I did really good on homework and extra credits and got A's. But it seemed that I could never make more than C's until after trial and error, I arrived at these conclusions. In most history classes, there are required math exams. I hate these. But usually by the end of the semester, I end up appreciating knowing them. Um, the professor will give you a list of names of geographical places like rivers, cities, etc. and blank map. You have to look up and memorize where they are. On the day of the test, he'll give you a blank map again and ask for about 40 to 60 percent of them, giving you a couple ones that are pretty much givens. If you're like me, you'll get home, put it off till the last day, and try to memorize them right before the day, right before the exam. The test is then done in a logical but mentally taxing way. There will be a number on the map and a number on the test. 
you know, if one is Greece, then you then we can write Greece on the other one. Um, if you're like me, you remember 15 or 25 of them. 15 out of 25 of them is when you walk into the room. By the time you get the test, he goes over things. You're done. You don't remember any of them. You remember three, maybe. As soon as you get the math exam, write write the, the names in the blanks. Or write the names on the map, because that's how you memorize them. And then copy from the map over to the blanks. For math exams, I found that the most frustrating thing of all was not just getting partial credit um, because I didn't write my workout all the way even though I got the right answer. Instead, it was knowing how to do the problem, having practiced it, and knowing how to use it when you plug it into the formula, or forgetting the formula. Especially if the formula that I needed to remember, which I thought I knew, was at the back of the book, back of the test. So when you go through, find all the places where you need formulas, write down the formulas, and then go and solve the questions a good chance you'll probably remember how to use the formula versus having to remember the whole formula. Take home exams are my favorite but tend to be the most work. Professors expect more from you. I find it worth it because I can take the test and study for it on my own time. Start working on it as soon as you get it. If you can turn it in early, get an extra day or two, uh, to proofread your paper, maybe in a higher letter grade. But also, once you have the draft written, you can filter out what you need in class and apply it directly. For instance, if I'm writing a paper on Israel and my professor is going over the Middle East, I know that um, I need to focus on what he says on Israel. You know, seems kind of makes seems kind of stupid, makes sense, but a lot of times people don't do it because um, if you don't, you don't know what you're writing it on, don't get the topic or whatever. Then you know he's going, you're looking at all your notes, and you're like, oh, what am I gonna do? Okay. Now, the classic multiple choice advice I received from multiple sources, mainly my mom, was one should eliminate wrong answers to come back to ones you don't remember, but mark it on the tests. However, one thing I learned in college was that many times questions have answers to other questions. For instance, question three reads, the laws of supply and demand, a concept crucial to free market economics, are generally associated with which political system? The answer, of course, is liberalism, not to be confused with liberals, big L liberals, as opposed to fascism or communism. Question 20 may later on read, liberal nations like the United States and the United Kingdom are capitalistic in nature. The term capitalism implies the, what economic law is followed. You see the connection? Free market economics is kind of the same as capitalism. Supply and demand kind of works with both. Um, it also helps you make sure that your answers are consistent. After the first test, you learn a lot about the different professors, what you can and cannot get away with. If a professor takes role, be best not to skip, especially if it has a direct effect on your grade. If your professor doesn't, you can probably get away with it. If you found that Monday, Wednesday, and Friday class, that Fridays are optional, a few people come, you know to only skip on Fridays. But, be warned, and I had a professor who had it that way, and uh, nobody came on Fridays except for me and a couple other people. We all got extra credit. And it ended up being enough credit to bump in for full letter grade. Remember, your professors have full credit control over everything in their class. If they see you participating, going above the requirements, being interested, in a non-suck-up way, they will see you, that you respect their time, and then you will get on their good side, which could mean the difference between 89.8 .8 being an A or B. Sucking up, however, is not suggested. They can tell. Remember your professors. For the most part, remember your, profess remember your professors, for the most part, want, you to, want to see you do well. They don't like failing people. It doesn't reflect good on them. They will do what it takes to be there for their students and help them learn the material. Very few, if any, professors just want to screw the students over. Lastly, my best advice I can give you concerning studying is to get with friends and study groups. I never used to like meeting up in groups. However, the best way to study with groups is to make manly study notes. Uh, that's all the important facts. My main idea is to sum up a couple pages of notes in a couple of sentences. Says, you can then make tests that are styled after the test of your professor, depending on the class. I have a friend of mine help me come up with study notes, justice, or manly study notes, whichever way. Uh, when I get to the class an hour beforehand, I have a couple other friends go through the test with me. With these study notes, you can live long and prosper, and may the force be with you.